Hi guys, Asmo here and today I have for you a guide for mana reservation efficiency and mana cost of skills. This is a topic that is like the most frequently asked question that I ever get about any build that I put out is how are you fitting all of these auras? How are you able to run all of three auras or five auras or whatever I'm running? How are you able to cast your skills with such low mana? I don't understand, my character cannot fit all of these auras. Over and over and over these questions are constantly asked, so I thought I'm gonna make a guide to help you guys learn about the reservation efficiency and mana cost so that you can fix it for every single build that you play. No matter the build, I'm gonna give you all the tools that you need to know about in order to solve these issues. Um, everybody knows about like Ashes and Enlighten, but those are very expensive items, right? Ashes with this type of a roll will cost you at least 30 divines, uh, at least 10 divines for Enlighten level 4, so this is very expensive, but on this character I have very low int I got like 100 int because we're playing slayer we're very dumb we have 668 int and we're able to fit all of these auras we got clarity we got herald of ash anger blood and sand grace determination precision and aspect of the cat that's a lot of auras that we're running on this character and we're still able to cast our skill indefinitely without any issues. So how are we doing this? Um, I'm gonna go over for the reservation efficiency uh, tricks and tips first, and then I'm gonna go over the mana cost. So for reservation efficiencies, the first step is to, of course, grab the aura uh, wheels on the passive skill tree. So you basically can tap here, type here aura, right? And then you're gonna see all these big wheels pop up. So we have one in here, we've got one in here this is the sovereignty one then we've got one in here with influence then i've got one in here with the leadership and then of course we got the charisma one here right so these will give you some reservation efficiency as you can see this is eight uh, percent this is 16 percent they they have a little bit of a different wording so you have to be careful right like um, there are for example uh, ways of reserving three big auras on a shield right when you have when we have this uh, shield that helps you reserve your skills in your um, in your life instead of mana right the prison guardian you are actually able to run three big auras in this like three fifty percent auras but in order to do that you have to have a generic reservation efficiency not mana reservation efficiency so i was doing this for example for a soul rent build and people were asking how are you able to still fit the three auras you have to drop one aura right and you actually don't have to drop an aura you simply anoint champion of the cause right champion of the cause you can see the wording on this is increased reservation efficiency of skills this applies to both life and mana so with both life and mana uh, you are able to uh, lower the reservation of uh, auras that you reserve on your life and on your mana compared to something like uh, charisma which only has increased mana reservation efficiency of skills so this is important pay attention to the wording so we've got these uh, the mastery from these was removed that was giving us 15 percent increased mana reservation efficiency which is why everybody is now scrambling to figure out how to get all of their auras running so picking up these is one of the options second option is to pick up the reservation efficiency for specific auras right so we look at um reservation right and we look for example here we got evasion master which gives us an option to increase the mana reservation efficiency for grace uh, evasion master you can look for them here here and there are other ones there's another one here right so just type evasion mastery and you're gonna find out all of them and then we also have determination one right like for example here we got another 25 percent increased mana reservation for determination this one is on armor masteries and then we also have energy shield mastery that has discipline uh, mana reservation oh. efficiency so that's where you can find those um, these reservation efficiencies are very helpful but there are also big auras for example like um, anger if you have anger hatred if you have wrath uh, all of these auras also have their uh, nodes for a big reservation efficiency but they are found on cluster jewels so here you can see an example of a cluster jewel that has a notable uncompromising and this notable gives me 50 percent increased mana reservation efficiency uh, this can be found on armor small cluster jewels or on the aura reservation like mana reservation efficiency of skills cluster jewels so this is an example of a cluster jewel that you can uh, target a specific aura with to increase your reservation efficiency as well as the smaller passives uh, generically giving you increased mana reservation efficiency you further increase those by adding an effect to it that says like added small 
small passive skills have 25% increased effect. Uh, this is a prefix. There is also a 35% increased effect, right? So you can get on these, for example, with 25, you're getting seven instead of 6%. So 14 instead of 12% generic mana reservation efficiency, and then 50% for the determination. So you can get the same thing for other auras. You can get this for every single aura in the game, pretty much out of the, out of the big 50% ones. So cluster jewels can help you if you're running any of the big auras as well. Uh, the next option that we have is um, helmet enchants, right? So helmet enchants, uh, when picking the helmet enchant, it's important to also understand the diminishing returns of reservation efficiency. What that means is that the more reservation efficiency you have for a specific aura, the less effect you're getting per every percentage point of increased mana reservation efficiency. So if I had here, for example, determination has 30% increased mana reservation efficiency, and then I also have the determination um, on the uncompromising, right? That would make it so that I cannot fit all of the auras because I would get diminishing returns. Stacking everything on determination is not going to help me as much as spreading them. So if you're getting, for example, the cluster jewel or if you're getting a mastery for something, if I was getting a mastery, I would rather get a mastery for determination than for the grace, right? Uh, if I was not running this small cluster jewel, you want to spread them and you want to make sure that you get it evenly. And the generic one is, of course, the best because it applies to everything everything but the more of it you're stacking the less effect you're getting that's an important thing to remember so helmet enchants uh, you can play with these the 30% applies to like grace determination all of the big auras basically right that's one of the uh, good sources of this helmet in general is an item slot that can give you ton of reservation efficiency you can see I have two modifiers on this. One is the implicit, the Eater of Worlds implicit, which gives me 10% increased mana reservation efficiency of skills. And then the other one is an Essence mod that gives me 10% mana reservation. So this thing gives me so much mana, right? This, this helmet. So I can show you the Essence which is here. This is the deafening essence of loathing. These essences are pretty expensive. If you're going to be buying them in bulk, they're going to cost you like eight chaos, um, but you can roll them on different pieces of gear and you can see for which pieces of gear they give you mana reservation efficiency. So it's basically other armor pieces that are not gloves or boots. Uh, so it's like chest piece um, and helmet, right? Those, uh, those pieces are going to give you the mana reservation efficiency. Uh, does it apply to shields? I think also maybe shields, right? So this will give you the reservation efficiency roll. Uh, if you want to craft a helmet like this, you basically spam this essence until you get some good suffixes, for example, and then uh, you will craft prefixes with the Eldritch currency, right? And you can grab, grab some life and then craft the last modifier that you want on it, right? So a little helmet like that is not that difficult to craft. Uh, if you want to increase the mana reservation efficiency from a lower tier of the Eldritch currency, because you can see that um, we have here, for example, uh, this is like a like a not gr not grand but like the bigger one the, the biggest one modifier but i simply rolled it with the grand and then i used an orb of conflict you have 50 50 of boosting it higher and then that's how we can get 10 percent increased mana reservation efficiency on the implicit here another implicit but i'm gonna maybe mention it later is the mana cost here right the searing exar can also get you a lowered mana cost of your skills so very very useful to run a rare helmet if you are like missing a lot of mana and it's also very easy to get the enchants on like generic helmets that you're gonna craft yourself okay after that uh we talked about passives we talked about um cluster jewels uh, these modifiers by the way of uh, uncompromising and all of the other ones that give you like the 50 percent reservation efficiency for a big aura can also be found on megalomaniacs so you can look for a megalomaniac that can have that and uh this, this is another option of like potentially cheaply finding that if you don't need all of this other reservation you just need that one node you could potentially find like a cheap megalomaniac with a couple of uh, useful notables plus the reservation or maybe more than one reservation right that's another way of doing this okay what else do we have here for reservation megalomaniac alternate quality there's also uh, alternate qualities that we can use for example uh, where do I have it? Precision, right? Precision has an alternate quality that increases the reservation efficiency. Precision also has um, a mastery here that gives you 100% increased mana reservation efficiency. This basically means that without any other reservation efficiency, it's going to cost half of what it normally does. And the same thing can be found for clarity on the mana uh, and for uh, vitality on the life mastery, right? So that's another thing that can be found. Uh, of course, anoints are very, very useful. 
you can uh, you can be like nowhere near this wheel or nowhere near this wheel and you can anoint charisma or you can anoint sovereignty usually they're pretty expensive it's like three silvers um, this one is effect uh, charisma is like two gold oils right so these are fairly expensive one gold oil right but they are very very helpful and there's also an amulet strangle grasp I think it's called right that allows you to uh, anoint it multiple times and that anoint can uh, be like really really good for mana reservation efficiency because you can grab a lot of these notables at the same time on one amulet another thing you can do with the amulet is to grab an owl's uprising so you can see here that owl's uprising can grant you basically no reservation on any aura of your choosing so you can find owl's uprising that has wrath has no reservation zealotry purities malevolence whatever you want these can be cheap or very expensive depending on which one you're going for if i was going for an, an owl up, owl's uprising i was probably uh, gonna target something like um I would target anger right because the anger one would probably be very cheap but the determination one would probably be expensive because everybody's running determination right so that's another thing you can also do um, another source of reduced mana reservation of like mana increased mana reservation efficiency can be corruptions on jewels so you can have jewels that are any regular jewel even cluster jewels uh, jewels when they are corrupted uh, they have a chance of rolling like minus like plus two to increase mana reservation efficiency right two percent increase mana reservation efficiency uh, you can run for example uh, a jewel in stygian vice right an abyss jewel that have that has extra reservation efficiency so that can be something that also helps um, i think i covered most of uh, what i know about the reservation efficiency so let's move on to the mana cost uh, for the mana cost there are a lot of things you can do the basic thing the first thing cheap very budget thing that you do if you cannot keep up with the mana uh, is to use a flask that is enduring right so enduring mana flask is something that i usually use at the very beginning before i get the uh, betrayal crafts that i can lower my mana cost with before i get replica conquerors efficiency and do all of that stuff i get an enduring mana flask this will this will be this is like a band-aid solution eventually you don't really want to run this but it's very good especially if you're playing like a pathfinder if you're playing like a pathfinder or scion you get a lot of flask charges you can permanently sustain this and that's why it's not going to hinder you on for example boss fights right you can still do bosses and you can still permanently sustain your mana so it's not going to cause any issues there if you cannot permanently sustain this you might have some issues depending on the build that you're playing uh, so let's look at other ways of reducing the mana cost we have for example uh, the um, crafts right so the betrayal crafts give you up to minus seven of total mana cost let me go to the crafting bench type mana cost mana cost and there we go we got a reduced mana cost of skills that goes on jewelry and uh, yeah, ju on jewelry, so rings and amulets. Then we've got a minus to the channeling mana cost, and then we've got a minus to the total mana cost of non-channeling skills. Uh, if you use catalysts on this, if you use fertile catalysts, you can get this from minus seven to minus eight. You can see an example of a ring here that I have from my other character that has a minus eight to total mana cost, and you achieve this by getting at least fifteen percent of fertile catalysts. So all you need before crafting the ring uh, you would have to use a uh, three fertile catalyst that will give you 15 percent and that will give you enough to roll uh, minus seven to be minus eight to total mana cost so you can run three of these three of these will give you minus 24 to total mana cost which is pretty huge then you can also use something like um inspiration right you can use inspiration inspiration support reduces the mana cost even though it has 20 percent uh, cost and reservation multiplier for some reason uh, the supported skills have 25 percent reduced mana cost uh, with inspiration one important note though uh, to know is that if you reduce the mana cost to be zero uh, so less than one you're going to not be gaining inspiration charges you have to spend mana in order to gain the inspiration charges right it says so gain an inspiration charge when you spend mana on upfront cost or effects of supported skills so if you're spending mana you can gain it but you need at least one mana cost so i for example could not use it because i have zero mana cost of my cleave right and i'm going to show you in a moment how i achieve that so that's one way of reducing the mana cost Another very common way of reducing the mana cost is running Conquer's Efficiency, the replica version. Replica Conquer Efficiency gives you minus nine to total mana cost, which is a very huge amount. It also gives you some skill effect duration and maximum rage. But the main thing, the main reason why people are using this is the minus nine to total mana cost. Another option, 
for reducing mana cost is Watcher's Eye modifier that gives you up to minus 10 to total mana cost while affected by clarity. So you have to run level 1 clarity as I'm doing here, you sacrifice 34 mana, but in uh, return you're getting 0 mana cost, right? So if you're getting to very low mana cost, this is especially useful if you can regenerate your mana but by amount that is too small for you to be able to keep the regeneration up, right? The regeneration is not keeping up with the, uh, with the spending of the mana, so reducing total mana cost works very well for that. Uh, so that's another way of doing it. Uh, what else do we have? Um, we also have a flask craft. Flask craft is especially useful if you have some kind of a perma uptime, right? So we flask, um, we've got reduced mana cost of skills during flask effect. Important thing to note here, um, this scales with flask effect. This uh, scales also uh, before we have the, the uh, minus to, to, to the mana cost. So if I have, let's say, uh, 100 mana cost, right? If my skill costs 100 mana and I double the effect of my, let's say I'm using mana flask, let's say I'm using like a um, uh, mage blood or something, right? And I can have like increased effect as well and I have like double the effect. So I will have like 50% reduced mana cost of skills, right? So it will first go down to 50 and then it will go minus 7, right? Instead of going minus 7 and then uh, down by a half, right? So this is super important because this will give you surprisingly huge amount of reduction to the mana cost of skills. You could potentially put this also on an enduring mana flask, right? And have this mana flask rolling all the time on a pathfinder or something. That's another option. So this uh, is very, very powerful. There, there are many sources of this modifier. Sometimes it is worth pathing on the passive skill tree to places like this, for example, the Dreamer, or you can potentially anoint the Dreamer, right? This will give you increased maximum mana, increased mana regeneration rate, and reduced mana cost of skills. Uh, this, uh, passives is, this passive is something that I'm using sometimes on a build that either path very close to it and pick up like the Ash Frost and Storm or something, or if I have a cheap anoint, or if I'm like, if I have like a thread of hope in here and I can grab this as well. This is very, very useful sometimes. So this is a very useful notable to know about. Uh, there are other ones that simply increase uh, your mana, but this one is uh, particularly useful because it also reduces the mana cost of skills. And again, it applies before uh, the, the minuses to this. Uh, okay, we talked about this. Also, you can have jewels with this, right? So jewels can have um, a lower mana cost of skills. It goes up to like 5% reduced uh, mana cost of skills on just regular um, jewels that you are rolling, like just a regular jewels, what are they called? Um, that like Viridian jewels, uh, Crimson jewels, all of those can have also reduced mana cost of skills. Um, what else do we have? The Watcher's Eye, the Flask, uh, the passives that you can pick. Uh, we talked about the catalyst. Uh, of course, you know, the choice of the supports that you're using sometimes comes into play. If you're increasing the level of a skill, that's also going to have an impact. Um, uh, another thing you can do if you have something that you absolutely cannot cast is to also use a uh, life tap, right? For example, I have here a mark on hit setup with assassin's mark. It has pretty high mana cost. Uh, mark on hit in general is going to be hard to sustain for builds like this. So combining it with life tap and then having also molten shell on life tap to make sure I can always cast it no matter what, no matter how low my, low my mana is or what, no matter how much increased the cost is, I will ob always be able to cast it. So having this on life tap is very, very useful because the mana cost is uh, very minimal but it's uh, worth doing this to just guarantee being able to always get these things off so hopefully this was educational and you're gonna learn now how to fix your mana issues how to fit all of your auras into your build and maybe all the content creators are going to be able to refer to this video now instead of answering each, each individual person how to fit the uh, auras that the build is supposed to be running thank you so much for watching and see you next time bye bye